You're watching the Emmy Award-winning Richard French live only on RNN. Too often these days we hear stories of young people who make terrible mistakes living on the wrong side of the law. And for some, those mistakes, they'll cost them their freedom and in some other cases, their lives. Now, preventing those kinds of endings, that is the goal of an innovative program called YAP, or Youth Assistance Program. High school students spending a day in prison and hearing about life behind bars from the men who are living on the inside. Now, our own Andrew Whitman, he spent a day with one class inside the Sullivan County Correctional Facility, and he joins us now with that story. Andrew? And Rich, the kids we followed inside this maximum security prison don't fit the typical profile of future inmates. They're from Ardsley High School, a solid upper middle class community in Westchester County. But behind the barbed wire and iron gates, they learned some important life lessons. Lessons that hopefully will help shape their lives for the better. Lessons that come from inmates whose crimes include kidnapping and murder, and who may spend the rest of their lives behind bars. This is nothing like a typical day at school for these students. They enter a dingy community room inside the prison single file. They're given prison numbers and many seemed a bit nervous for what was to come. And their day would only get worse. I didn't really know what was going on, so at first I was just like more startled than like I didn't know how to react. But then once they started talking, I started to like understand what was going on. And 94 8 8135. My name is Jose. I'm serving 28 one third years to life for murder, attempt murder, and assault. I currently have 16 and a half years in prison. I'm in prison because of my distorted way of thinking. It didn't take long for the students to realize their teachers today had committed some terrible crimes. 888-9997. I'm serving a prison sentence of 25 years to life. I've been in prison for the last 22 years. I used to snatch drug dealers and hold them for a ransom because I thought that was the way to get rich quick. This time, I want everybody to face down on the ground and put your hands on your hands. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Parts of the program are designed to disorient the students, let them know that the world inside is nothing like the world they know. The whole program can go on with you guys laying down on this floor. So I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm speaking to all the kids, young people, laying down on this cold, hard, dirty floor. How does it feel to be on the floor? Oh, 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 oh. That's what I'm talking about. But the goal here is not just to scare students, it's also to relate to them, to show there's not all that much separating these teens from hardened criminals. Bad decisions can be made by anyone. In prison today, we have individuals that are professors. So it's not like everybody has to have led a life of crime. We got individuals on the team right now who have come from good families, middle class families. So it's not so much as where it can be a certain type of individual that has to come to prison. It's all about making bad decisions. And to make one message clear, that these young people don't have to live this path to see its dangers. If I tell him to run as fast as he can, come and quick kick you as hard as he can in your behind, do you need to experience that to know that it's going to hurt? No, sir. It's different coming from someone who's like actually experienced it and who hasn't, you know, it doesn't feel so like, okay, like, don't do this or this or this because it's bad. It's more like, okay, don't do this because we've experienced it and we know that it's wrong and we know that, like, it can, like, really, like, affect your life. Do you know the last time we heard a baby cry? 22 years ago. Do you know the last time I ate with a real fork? 22 years ago. Do you know the last time I drunk out of a glass? 22 years ago. Even lunchtime provided lessons as students ate what the inmates were eating. I don't know. <laughs> um, it was like rice with beef. It was kind of gross. And by the time students went through a mock inmate arrival lineup and inspection. And imagine you butt naked standing on one another like this. Suppose the person in front of you is way overweight. Suppose he smells. Suppose he don't want you breathing on him. Suppose he feel you ride him too close and he turn around and knock the s*** out of you. You just got the handle. It seemed like at least some of the lessons had been learned. It's just different because it's, you're hearing it from people that actually went through it and had the experience. So it just, I think it hits you differently when it's not just reading it out of a textbook, seeing someone hands-on who's in prison right now because of the wrong decision. 
I know that I've made some bad decisions, my friends have made bad decisions, and I see that we're all just people, and people sometimes make mistakes with their life, and they wind up really regretting it. And I've been through some of what they've been through, and I mean, what they're saying really, it got to me. Like, it, it, it made an impact on my life. And I'm not, not going to just take this experience for granted. A feeling not exclusive to just the students. It gives me a sense of satisfaction that, you know, I helped someone because I ruined my life. And just helping a kid with my experiences is awesome. It's an awesome feeling. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a feeling. It, it's a feeling so hard to describe. But that look at these behind bars life lessons is really only half the story. And tomorrow in part two, we'll put the focus on the inmates. They are former drug dealers, kidnappers, and even murderers turned teachers, at least in this venue. And like Green Eyes said at the end of the piece, they also get a lot out of this program. In some cases, maybe even more than the students themselves. Right. And we'll get to the inmates' perspective in a second, but from the kids, we all know, every teenager thinks they have all the answers. What got through to the kids uh, the most, you think, from this visit? It, it was really the connection that they had with the inmates. They saw a lot of themselves in these inmates. They went to great lengths to make that point, that for the most part, they were just like these students, only they made some bad choices that led to problems down the road. There were also other things. Some of the, the more startling elements sort of shook the kids into place to let them know this was not their typical environment. But this is not a place they want to be. Now, there were parts of this that you couldn't show on camera, right? Yeah, well, we weren't allowed to show the security going in, which was also an important role for the kids. They, you know, when you go through and you get searched and everything, you get patted down, it, it really can dehumanize you. It's only to a, a degree of what the inmates go through any time they go in and out. We also were not allowed to follow the students into per individual cells, again, for security reasons. But the students got a lot out of that, too. They, the cramped conditions, you don't quite realize what a tiny little jail cell or prison cell feels like until you're inside it and you realize there's almost no room to, to move around. And it's not just for a day, it's no. for a lifetime. Now speak to those inmates because what surprised me was for some of these guys, they got to go through the worst moment in their lives that got them there in the first place and have to relive that. Why would they do that for complete strangers going through it all over again? Surprised me as well, Rich. One is because they truly want to see people or young kids not follow their own paths. They feel like they've wasted their lives in a lot of ways and they don't want to see other kids do it. And the other reason, it's sort of the completion of the corrections process. They realize the mistakes they made and by doing that, they, they feel as though they've, they're paying their debt in some way and it helps them recover from the, the mistakes that they made in their past. We had a lot more on this in part two tomorrow. And again, that coming up tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Andrew, thank you very much.